welcome everyone back to another episode of not fighting uh the show where someone at the end dies every single episode who dies it'd be funny if they were listening for the first time and they're like whoa there's only two people on here is this gonna be what am i watching how long is youtube gonna keep this up <laughs> i'm confused <laughs> it's a mur- it's a it's a youtube policy murder joke if you have to explain the joke, I don't think it's a joke. Yeah, especially when it's about murder. <laughs> Hot, killed you. I made you look. Okay, so, you know, we're starting off real great here today. Strong start, <laughs> strong start. Yeah. I'm, uh, I try and steer you away, and I feel like every time I try and steer you away from bad things that yeah. you're doing, you just go into it. I'm like a child in that way where it's like... I, you're not going to tell me what to do. No, I there's tell, a part of me... I can tell you don't want me to talk about this, so I'm going to keep going until you find it funny. We... Well, there... <laughs> <laughs> I nailed it there, huh? We <laughs> we touched on me doing magic a little bit in the last episode, but I, I feel like um, the magic and, and understanding that like an audience is like not into it, and they're like, don't do magic, guy. And I'm like, for 20 more minutes, magic coming at you. Um I feel like there's a part of me that's like, I can turn them. I'm yeah, gonna get them. I know. And I'm and here's the thing, as your wife and as somebody who knows you better <laughs> and is like normal and not that way, uh, I also can tell you when you should stop, quit when you're ahead. And you don't listen to me sometimes and you should. Well, here's the thing that I feel like uh most people don't understand about magic or entertainment or whatever you don't know you want to be entertained until you are and no i know when i want to be entertained i know what's entertaining and what's not (laughs) and that's the thing that you don't understand that sometimes and that's what makes me a classic creative and also an artist is because i'm like you don't know what you enjoy until i show you no let me show you my vision for what you'll enjoy (laughs) and this is the things that annoy me about you sometimes (laughs) Uh, stop i'm over it how many times have i said that to you many times uh, yes today even yeah just now just now <laughs> <laughs> no but uh you know we talked a little bit about magic in the last episode and me like um sort of like wanting to entertain people that don't want to be entertained and i think one of the things uh where jujitsu is trying to entertain people or they don't want to be entertained is spectator jujitsu yeah I, yeah, I feel like that, you know, we keep trying, you know, and and it's fun to watch. It's kind of, but I feel like it's like in any sport where there's some sports that are just entertaining. You don't have to know what's going on or what's like the person you don't, but even still for it to keep your interest, you have to like find a connection yeah. to the sport, right? Like it's like you want to like football is entertaining. Like everybody love like, well, Americans love football. I was going to say, everybody, <laughs> probably most people that watch the show. Americans love football. And um, I, it's like, it is very entertaining to watch. You have to kind of know what's going on a little bit to understand I feel like to be entertained, but like if you're not invested in a team, like it's not as exciting. And I think that jujitsu is kind of that way too, where it's like, it's exciting and it's like thrilling when you're invested in the person that you're watching. Like, oh, I like, you know, you have some interest, like I like this person. I don't like this person or that's like my, my friend or teammate or whomever. Like when you have some kind of emotional connection to the, the match, even a boring match, you still like, because you're just like on pins and needles, like, because you want them to win, right? But like, it's still not that exciting. So one thing that I think <laughs> is kind of interesting to think about, and I, I'm, I'm making this up right now as we discuss okay. this. So it's a hot take okay. on something that uh, could be easily proven false. But my, okay. my assumption is that team sports are something that's easy to rally around because there's some social aspect biologically ingrained in us to Mm want to like team up or tribe up so we cheer for teams but if you think about like individual sports Mm -hmm. that like someone competes like fighting is really the only one that will tolerate yeah as long as we're not doing it and i think it's because fighting is so primal that 
like people mm-hmm. think that well inherently they can so i was trying to think about like other like individual sports that are really popular and things that come to mind are tennis tennis and like, golf yeah and if you like to watch tennis or golf like don't you probably play tennis or golf yeah i might be way wrong about that i mean way. but they're also one of those things that you can't yell and cheer and scream and like have a good time at the things it's like you have to like little quiet like Mm. you know don't disturb them like don't whatever we're like sports that are fun like it's fun to like i don't know i'm trying to think of like even just like in high school going to like basketball games i was like a big like we i loved watching basketball like when i was younger and like we always go to game because it's fun to like when the opposing team is shooting a free throw to like scream something like when everything's quiet and then you just yell as i shoot or like or one of the opposing players runs up and like pulls the other guy's pants down i was a big harlem globetrotters fan back in the day <laughs> that's not a thing that happens <laughs> is it do you think it's weird that like <laughs> Or I guess knowing me, do you think it's odd that the Harlem Globetrotters were my favorite basketball team? Not at all. Because you you love, um, uh, what's the word? Novelty? Novelty, yes. It's they very, were really like, good, but I yeah. like that they didn't have to always play by the rules. Yeah, you yeah you don't like to have, you don't, you hate rules. It, it, I general. don't hate them. I just like, it generally They're, they're a them. guideline. Yeah. Yeah. A general, a generalization, not not like a hard and fast thing. Rules are somebody else's opinion of how something should be. Yes, <laughs> that's how you that's how you operate in all things. All all things, and that includes recipes. <laughs> recipes are rules. Rules on how to make something. I'm like, this was that person's opinion on how to make their pie. And this is why you can't bake. <laughs> uh, but you know, We're, anyway. <laughs> yeah and what were we talking about <laughs> I, I can grill a steak no. really well but yeah like food in general yeah but cooking cooking and baking are different things cooking you don't have to follow rules necessarily cooking is a little bit more free form than baking baking things have to be specific otherwise you know your your bread it make maybe you're making pretzels and your bread's not gonna rise or it's not I knew gonna be this properly. Was gonna come up. I knew it was gonna come up. I just have to point it out because I was right and pretzels are bread and everybody agrees with me and you still have a hard time conceding that. But you did say to me yesterday, I can't believe you won that argument. No, you won. You won but the thing is is like it just bothers me because we all deep down know they're chips and it's like it's a chip and you're eating it like it's a chip and it's a snack, like how a chip is a snack. And we're just going to pretend like that's not how things are. But, it's a bread. But anyway, we can move on from that. No, but I would say, <laughs> I, would, I would just finish it with this. What I think is funny about it is um, mm. because you said something to me earlier this week that had me dying. And if I'm going to mess something up, like cooking something, I'm going to mess it up how? Are you going to slightly notice? or No, it's going to be egregious. Yeah. Like what is something that... The cookies you tried to make? No. That was, no. no I mean, yeah. Just a, a, a melted sheet of goo? Um, I let out an ingredient, and turns out cookies need that to just, like, not melt into the oven and all over the tray. <laughs> Anyhow, what? No, I, there's an instance where there's a seasoning on, like, a savory food that I used. and to Pepper. This- you always <laughs> use way too much pepper. I'm like, every time he makes something, I'm like, you love pepper. She makes it, she, like, twists a knife, because I put too much pepper on one thing one time <laughs> that she makes it out like I like. But I feel like of all the seasonings, like... Salt, you can oversalt something for sure, and it's gonna be like you can, you can, but it because you will know, but it's hard to oversalt something. I would say it's hard, it's easy to over pepper something, and you (laughs) love to easily, you love to over pepper things. (laughs) Just saying, first of all, (laughs) this, this. This lady, she likes high blood pressure. That's what she likes. And the thing is, <laughs> the, the face she made, like, scoff. <laughs> like, My blood pressure is extremely low, so no, I think I can, enjoy, great I can enjoy as much salt as I would please. <laughs> yeah, the athletic commissions will be pleased. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the like... A, multiple times doctors have retaken my blood pressure because it's so low because i'm that healthy well that sounds dangerous but no no it's not dangerous i googled it i googled it which is earlier this week (laughs) and the point is i'm an extremist i always think like if something needs to be salty like push the limit on the salt you know like that's what you want the most Mm -hmm. and you said that i'm the reason that people make I forgot what it was. <laughs> it was a certain type of blasted. Oh, f- flavor blasted anything. 
<laughs> Which is like, I think gold fl- goldfish are like the the thing that are like flavor blasted. They had to have trademarked it, like, uh, right? But I feel like everybody kind of does but that. But there was something else that's like another thing where it's like overly like seasoned. Yeah. Or they're like, it's cheddar, but like. Super ex- cheddar. Extreme cheddar. The <laughs> most cheddar ever. Yes. Yeah. Yes. You are that. You're, you are why. You are the type of person that you are the demographic that created that. And the thing is, I like to see um, like the the greatest expression of something. And so earlier this week, you and I, we were watching two of our really good friends, uh, Michael Trasso and a uh, friend of the show, Nick Schrock. Shout out to, to the Moose. Moose. We were watching them. Um, we The four of us got together to work on some wrestling. Michael Trasso, accomplished wrestler. The Merge Online, check it out. Check um, it he um he he was able to come into town and was uh training with us a little bit we were working on the feet and um watching him it was fun because we just like did wrestling like once i was a takedown we like reset and i'm like we didn't even actually ever do like jujitsu and that was fun for me (laughs) it was fun i mean it was i I just enjoy it and that was that was the kind of the point is we were Mm -hmm. talking you know before we got on our diatribe about you know how much uh you just you just love pepper (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> um, we were talking a little bit about like how jujitsu is not really the spectator sport and individual sports yeah. like kind of lend themselves to people that understand it. But if, if that is going to happen when we were watching, uh, Nick and, and Mike kind of, uh, basically start on the feet, do mm-hmm. some nogi grappling. Like, it's not like either of the, they, it's not like they were going particularly hard, Mm-mm. but neither of those guys have much of an ego. And for that reason, they both, well, they, in, in, in this scenario like they don't have so yeah. much ego that they have to win every battle that they in and i think start, i think they I trained together earlier this week yeah but they're both good friends of ours and um mm-hmm. they got together and it was really really fun to watch them roll nogi especially on the feet mm-hmm. like just the wrestling and just the, work wrestling yeah. and um it was it was really fun and i said like look if this is if nogi grappling was this it would be a spectator sport yeah. But I said, yeah, but it's just wrestling. And I think wrestling can be a lot more exciting yeah. in a lot of ways because you have a shorter time period and, like, you have to engage. And that's the thing about jujitsu. jitsu whereas, like, on the feet, if you, like, even for AD- ADCC, excuse me, um, I think it's, like, you have to, I don't know, anytime people have to just do stand-up and they're jiu-jitsu competitors, um, there's like a lot of grabbing and then disengaging. It's yeah. like nobody really knows what they want to do. So it's like, I'm going to like club the back of your head. And then when you grab me, I'm going to be like, no, <laughs> <laughs> you're not going to get ahead of me because I didn't know what I wanted to do with that grip. Yeah. <laughs> and that's like kind of how it goes. But it's fun when like people are and like, you got lucky this time because I totally knew what I wanted to do from there. And I've got like 10 moves and I'm good at them. <laughs> But it's fun, like, when when people are, like, actually, like, trying to, to, like, work a takedown and find an angle and, like, engaging with people where it's, like, I'm actually, like, I'm not just, like, running away on the feet or trying to angle to, like, get a lucky position or it's, like, I'm going to pretend to shoot on your legs and then pull guard. Like, that's, that's what I said <laughs> yesterday. I was, like, you know, the problem with a lot of takedowns in, in jiu-jitsu, like you said, when, when they're forced to, mm-hmm. um you get people that are like faking it till they make it Mm -hmm. where like they want to basically have a steady base and they want you to try something risky so that they can take advantage they can just like yeah be like matt nope and then like i'm on top magically yeah (laughs) and that's true and that that was really fun about watching them is they were able to like basically just attack back and forth Mm -hmm. attack and counter attack and counter and no one was like you know it was it was just fun like, yeah yeah and because i think it's like when you have that kind of thing i don't know it's fun because it's like we're all trying to just like have a good time roll like figure some stuff out like work certain things but like also just like see what you're doing to kind of like learn from like if i'm doing this like what are you, how's you how are you going to react and like there's no ego of like f- uh fear of failure yeah you know i and think that's-, that's like probably what a lot of people, especially like jujitsu competitors that are very gi heavy, it's like the fear of failure will prevent you from even trying to like take somebody down or like engage in that game because it's very outside of the realm of like 
competition jujitsu, even though it's like, because you can pull guard, I guess. Yeah. If, if pulling guard was an option, I think that would force things to be a little bit more exciting because you'd have to like. Or or if like, I, mean, I hate to be like classic MMA guy, but like stand them up. But like after a certain amount of time, just the way with the double guard, it's like mm-hmm. you pulled guard, you went double lasso, like you didn't do anything with it for 20 seconds. Like now you guys are back on the feet. Like we need, we need something to happen. You can pull again immediately if you want to, but like. I also think this is just like kind of random, but like if a double guard pull, okay, you have 20 seconds. But then they reset and you have to stand up. I don't think they should be penalized for that. I think it's just like stalling calls, like where it's like, okay, you're stalling, like just reset the position versus like penalizing somebody. It should be like judo where it's like 10 seconds. You know, it's like, yeah, do like if you're going to that position, attack. And if you're trying to figure if you just want to get into that position and figure it out, like that's Mm -hmm. not allowed. Mm hmm. But 10-minute matches are going to always produce that. Yes, yeah. And that's part of jiu-jitsu's problem, too, I think. And I think you've heard... And I think a lot of people, too, or it's like, I don't know why people would just want to do this, like, unlimited time or whatever. I just, I mean, I know I've talked about this before, but I just don't understand the, like, from a, especially from a spectator, it's like, I don't care. Like, if that's going to happen, it's like everybody's just trying not to lose. And then you're just going to like somebody's just you're just waiting for somebody to make a mistake because you got tired. It's like yeah, wearing it's, somebody down. It's, it's Jitsu's version of the like ultra marathon, you know, yeah. like the 200 mile race yeah. or whatever. It's like some people want to go compete in the model where it's like a sprint. And some people want to do the one that like yeah. is forever. Yeah. Um, and I think it's dictated largely by attributes. But one of the things that I've never understood is like for the like incentive to like create action to make it exciting rather than try to build it into the rules. You see people be like, well, we should offer money then for like submissions or whatever. Mm-hmm. And I actually think that makes sh- competitors shell up more because it mm-hmm. seems like there's more on the line. So I'm less apt to want to make that mistake. Yes. Versus attack. So if you really want people to attack, I think you should have like a crowd like applause on the action meter or something like that you know what i mean like it's or paid based on that or i who knows but like that's the thing is like if you really want something pleasing to the to spectators like you have to really build that into the rule set or you're gonna have to base it on what people find entertaining which means like that has to very be very arbitrary the, the, mm-hmm. <laughs> and and that's the thing about like i think money in something like jujitsu or even mma recently uh dominic cruz uh after his post fight interview they they basically asked him like what do you want to do with his career does he want a title shot who does he want to call out and he called out the like he said he wouldn't do it like a a charity match against the guy who is in charge of like running the, sponsorships for, for monster energy yeah, he's drink a business development guy for monster that serves as like the rep for the the ufc and he was like yeah i want to call that guy out which he that guy had some fights um does he yeah, he's know. he's actually had some fights mm-hmm. and uh but I think he's got some injuries and I don't know. I think he's Dom really, mentioned it in the the he's post. Way bigger than Dom. <laughs> yeah, I mean it, But anyway. But I mean if, if you're going to be in a scenario if you're a small guy, you can call out big guy. Big guy can't call out a small guy. Yeah, 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 100%. Yep. So not fighting. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I think it's interesting because uh basically it kind of stems from his accusation that, you know, like um that this guy uses his influence or the the mo- monster sponsorship money to just like influence different things, social media, it's whatever. It's like kind of like forcing people to like, okay, I'm gonna give you this sponsorship from Monster, but you also have to like perform from my own personal social media type yeah. thing. I think that was like the the I guess criticism. And that's that's something that I've seen in jujitsu for a really long time, where mm-hmm. you know like. Uh, basically jujitsu is beholden to like somebody that wants to use their money for influence or money for uh, lack of friendship <laughs> clout, the clout chase yeah it's clout yeah and um, you know that's been fighting for forever you know like rich oh, yeah. guys want to pay the boxers or I'm gonna the- I'm gonna be Justin Bieber in Floyd Mayweather's like corner right is that who he was in yeah 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 Floyd <laughs> like, Mayweather's wait. corner and <laughs> yeah I I I always remember this in context of, I can't even remember who said it, but it was a famous rapper. And he's like, yeah, that's why they always say ballers want to be rappers. Rappers want to be ballers. Mm-hmm. And it's the same where it's like, I think, 
you know, uh, fighters want to be like really rich people and really rich people deep down want to be like really, really tough. And yeah, so it's like yeah. you have this like kind of feeding off it's each like, other. It's like a celebrities want to be. It's like the fame because being a famous fighter doesn't mean that you have the same like level of celebrity as a as a like an actor yeah. or a musician. So I think it's like chasing that like fame and versus chasing like that like toughness like yeah type thing. Yeah, like, I'm totally oh, with you. I don't want to be famous just for like being able to cry really well on camera <laughs> like <laughs> or sing really well. Like I want to be like tough and famous for being that kind of guy. So you want to associate yourself with those types of people and I think it happens a lot where it's like or or like in some instances it's like you're not really like famous you're just rich and you've you're or you're successful in like one area so you want to like like build this clout and connect yourself to people who have like something that you don't the, right the, some kind of like skill or like i guess audience that you don't yeah and the definition of antitrust is to create a monopoly and basically you use one monopoly to create another so mm -hmm. use your dominance in one category to become dominant in another and i think that that's sort of what you see and i think fighting is always going to be a conduit for that because yeah. you've got basically people that have been very very successful but like i mean it's like one of those things where it's like you've got the rich kid in school or whatever but it's like you you can't buy being cool or whatever and it's something too because you see it like you see why it works so well because fighting like there's very few many there's very few people who make good money in fighting you know like there's very people very few people that get rich off of just on on fighting whether it's boxing or mma, MMA like that's it's just that's not a lot of people and so these like when you when you, I've seen it so many times, especially in jujitsu, it's like the guys who have money that come into the academies or whatever, and like they're wealthy. You see, like all this like butt kissing and sucking up to those people because the fighters are like, oh, like you know, like maybe they can hook me up with something or maybe they'll help me. And it's like they just need like a sponsorship or something like a way to get by, like or somebody to like, I guess bankroll their like hobby yeah <laughs> or you know what their their dreams and, I, and so it's like it goes both ways like, i mean everybody's using each other in a lot of ways it's very prevalent mm -hmm. like you can look no further than like wrestling in that movie with steve carell mm -hmm. about the dupont guy yeah um where it's like you've got this rich guy that's like basically like paying for influence in this you know other mm -hmm. thing trying to basically like buy this clout that he's like tough or you know something else and um you know it's like that old chris rock joke where he's like there's a difference between rich and wealthy mm -hmm. rich is shaquille o'neal wealthy is the guy that writes shaquille o'neal's check <laughs> slam dunk you know <laughs> and that's what's funny to me is like uh i i see it even in jiu-jitsu but in jiu-jitsu uh separate slightly from fighting is like in mma or boxing like on your merit alone and um and just by like accomplishment you can become like independently wealthy on your own and start to build on that mm -hmm. uh and you just do you really can't the opportunity is not there but uh what's interesting to me is like even if you can make money in jiu-jitsu if you're one of the rare people that do it is very much like self-financed by uh by rich people basically like mm -hmm. realistically there's not the money that exists in jiu-jitsu does not flow down to the athletes and we talked about doing an episode on this in the future it's the um, same in fighting in i wouldn't have charts too. and stuff because i have i have ideas about how we're there is about. more there's money in jiu-jitsu it's just not being given to the athletes yeah it's the one percent philosophy yeah. but mm -hmm. the thing that i think is interesting is even in that scenario like you rely really on these these arbiters of of the wealth to like basically create the opportunity for the athletes and um that's the idea behind unions and different things like that mm -hmm. um which we should probably not talk about any further as you're getting uh, into yeah. professional mma no but yeah it's one of those things that i think that uh for athletes it really becomes something where it's like yeah you do have to understand that there's a symbiotic relationship here and you need to be able to take advantage as much as the other person mm -hmm. is and if that balance doesn't feel correct then yeah i don't know i think it's probably something worth speaking up about 
But I think that's something, too, that, um, like, jiu-jitsu athletes don't understand as far as, like, looking for sponsorship and looking for things. It's, like, a lot of these athletes, because you see it, like, white belts asking, wanting to get sponsored to, like, be a jiu-jitsu competitor. And it's, like, you have, n- you have no value. There's nothing that you can offer to this company. So it's, like, there has to be this, like, balance of, like, they're sponsoring you because you have some kind of influence or, you know, like there's something that you reach. Audience yeah, you have reach. A, that's an what audience. That's advertiser wants. Yes. And so I think that's like that gets mistaken a lot. And so people just want a handout. They don't really want to have to work in return because it's like, oh, yeah, just give me this stuff and I'll wear it. But it's like, no, no, no you have to like, like actually promote yeah. their brand. Yeah, I think people... Um, I think one of the things that's happened because of things like social media and like uh, this idea of an influencer that influence mm-hmm. has like a value or whatever, you have to realize like these things have to have a value to someone. Mm-hmm. And um, like, for example, if you go to jiu-jitsu every day and you're working hard, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Like voluntary work only has the value that someone is willing to place on it so you feel you can feel like i'm training really hard and i'm a blue belt and i'm really really good or whatever but maybe that has zero value to somebody else so that doesn't make you entitled to whatever you think that value is and i think that can up in jiu-jitsu a lot too oh yeah yeah there's a lot of entitlement in the sport I feel like it's probably in all sports, but we just really know about this one because, you know, we've been invested in it for like 13 years. Shout out to Municipal Australian Rugby. <laughs> so random. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I think it's it's interesting that you kind of bring those things up because I think they uh, have been prevalent for a long time and it's good to draw attention to it. It's interesting to see people like Dominic Cruz uh, bringing it up. Uh, on a major broadcast but um i think i definitely think it's something that extends far beyond mma and oh, yeah. something that's prevalent in all fighting sports mm-hmm. and all individual sports god only knows like if you're a young great golfer what kinds of like fundraiser events and stuff like that you have to go to yeah but i yeah i don't i don't know <laughs> i don't know where i was gonna go with that i just bunch like... of hedge fund managers hire tiger woods hit them balls real far for us what were they? I was just. What were we just listening to? Oh, they were talking about on flagrant about like Jay Z, like uh, and like being like rich, but like the billionaires that he's like because he's selling title or whatever to Bezos yeah. and like how to Square, huh? To Square, yeah. Jeff Bezos. No, Square is uh, Jack Dorsey's. Oh, Jack. Guys. Yeah, that's what I meant. That's what I meant. Jack Dorsey, Twitter, St. Yes. Louis. Yes, but uh, how the guys who are like really rich like they pay the people who are kind of rich to like perform for their kids <laughs> birthday parties and stuff yeah and it's like there's just such a discrepancy and like there is levels to this game yeah <laughs> and i think that that's the the power of leverage if there's anything you can learn jiu-jitsu it's that um with the right leverage you can like you can gain a significant advantage over your opponent no matter how much how large they are or strong they are and um, I think that's what you see a lot with finance uh, in the United States. And boy, would it be a hard pivot if we talked more about it. But um, uh, I was like, you're getting real deep here. <laughs> but I do think that uh, money in the sport of jiu-jitsu is something that uh, we would like to probably talk a, a little bit more about. Mm-hmm. But I, it's something I really would like to prepare for because I do think that there's some information that could be um, pretty interesting um, if it was all laid out properly. It may be beneficial to certain parties yeah the the athletes the athletes so you have more leverage and like more bargaining power and speaking of which bargaining power um hopefully we can <laughs> bargain you an opponent for your first mma fight here hopefully in the near future. you guys i'm not really good so fight <laughs> me like i um i barely know how to punch somebody Get it while you and can I, like and I'm not really, I, you know, I'm, I'm not training a lot of jiu-jitsu right now because I'm focused more on MMA, so my jiu-jitsu is probably slacking. This is garbage. And, you know, yeah. I'm just, <laughs> just a brand new, a brand new striker, so. A white belt. So, uh, me. we're hoping that we'll have some fight news. Fight sometime. me. <laughs> we hope that we'll have fight news soon. And once we do, we'll let. I feel like I've been saying that for like five months. Yeah. But well, really not, just since like january yeah and well since january you've been having a fight in yeah. a couple weeks so 
Yeah. Um, hopefully new soon. And we want to thank everybody for watching the show and listening. And if you have a chance to leave a comment or review, uh, please do so. Like, subscribe. You can find us on obviously YouTube if you're watching this, if you're listening. If you on make whatever. it this far in the end of the podcast and you comment banana, I'll give you a million dollars. No, you won't. It's Don't not. Say that's that. not legally binding. I just some just talking. He's not going to give you anything, but like, we will like. But I might. Why well, wouldn't that be a like? That'd be a huge. But you know what we could do. You know what we could do, and this is just spitballing. I have a brand new Fuji Gi in our garage, and for those comments, we could. People who comment banana. I like you said, I have A, as if we both don't have like boxes of new geese in the garage. No, we don't have brand new ones, but we do have two brand new ones. And maybe we'll be giving those away so to those think- who comment with a banana emoji. I like emojis better than People the are going to think it's like a podcast about penises or something. No, no, no. We didn't say eggplants. <laughs> They're going to have to teach emojis in school one day. Just yeah. watch. You're going to have to. Anyways, with that in mind, we want to thank everybody for watching or listening to the podcast. I'm Tyler Bishop. And And I'm Jenna Bishop. And this has been... Not Fighting. Not Fighting.